Never mind. Welcome to our November news update. As always, it's gonna be a bit quick, rough and unpolished, but we don't wanna lose too much time making these videos. So last month we released Precious Plastic version three and everything is online, but we also did an offline exhibition as you can see in last month's videos. And this month I wanna start off with the community news because it's been a while and we have all these nice objects now here, which people from over the world send for our exhibition. So for instance, we have the guys uh, from Ukraine, Zelenu, who makes these nice baskets with their extrusion machine. Impressive how they get that done. We got some PET filament from the guys in Greece. Uh, wall clocks from Umel, um, sorry guys, I don't know how to pronounce your name. From Slovakia, they also make nice bowls. We have the surf rack scrapers from Rise and Carry in Sri Lanka. Some wash pans from Fresh Plastic in Dresden. Lamps made in Morocco, lamps made in UK. I'm sitting on a chair from a group in France. Coasters from, coasters from Curaçao. And these shoe packs from Happenstance in UK. It's to put on your wall so you can hang your clothes. Now some of these makers like Happenstance uploaded a video on our website to show them how they make these products so you can make them yourself as well. We're going to show you how to make some stew packs. And I will teach you how to make recycled plastic wall clock. But not everyone knows how to make stuff themselves. So we also have our online bazaar where all these products are on so you can buy them from these people around the world. So I would highly encourage to have a look and if you can buy something because you, you directly support all these people that want to start recycling plastic and especially in the beginning they could really use help with selling the products they made. So have a look and support them. So after we launched version 3, I won a 10,000 euro award on a television show. Dave Rockets! Online, over 2,000 people added themselves to our map and wanted to start recycling plastic. And we had one big final dinner with the team because we were finished. And that really surprised me. I had such a great time working with these people from all over the world, which I've never seen before, but they brought so much motivation, energy and passion. I mean, that really boosted the project forward. And that evening also Precious Plastic Dresden dropped by and Estonia with Jigor. You, you might have seen him in the forums. So this is him in real life. Jigor. And now everyone left again, so this place is empty, just me. Yes, I still need to clean up a bit. But that's kind of how Precious Plastic works. We gather a lot of feedback, come up with a new version, assemble a team and work very intensively and hard on making that happen. And then we just share everything online, open source for free, very well documented. So we are kind of done. We just need to sit back, see what the community does with it and chill. We had some extra time, so me, Katrina and Mattia went to Germany to protest against the coal mine. Fresh plastic represent? Represent! <laughs> So we're currently in a coal mine, which looks like this. Just uh, a lot of sand, there used to be coal. So they cut down all these trees and landscape to dig it out. And they use this massive machine to get it out. And now we are all protesting against it. Because it's not good for the environment. So, yeah. so what's gonna happen next? What? What's next? What's next? Yeah. We're going to cross the police line and hope to not get caught. Yeah. And here's Mattia digging up some coal. <laughs> this mine is huge. It's this chopped down white thing here on the map. And if you compare it with a city in Europe, it's almost the same size. And this whole thing felt a bit weird because the police is blocking you to not enter the mine. But you're, so you're face to face with them, look each other straight in the eyes. And you can see they also don't really want to be there. 
I mean, they're just doing their job, but they also don't want their children to grow up in a polluted environment. So they kind of agree with what we're doing as well. And then you realize you can't really blame individuals either. It's really about this whole system that's in place, which is super difficult to, to change. But for me, the most motivational part was that all these people came together with their energy to take a stand and wanting to change something. And I think that's the amount of power and energy you need to really break down these systems. So it's good to see people taking a stand. And finally, I asked you guys on Patreon what you would like to see in these monthly news updates. And you mentioned it would be nice to see some interviews with the team members. So here we go. And we're currently in Kenya doing some work in our workspace. And Mattia is in here, so let me get him so he can answer some questions. Yo, Mattia, are you up for some answers? Oh, you guys wanted some questions, so here we have Mattia from Italy. Yo, hello. I think you've seen me before. In the monthly news updates, huh? Yes. He's our Italian and he's been pretty steady working on precious plastic for over the last years. I'm not good in doing interviews, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, Super improvised, yes, totally improvised. As always. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> what do you like about precious plastic? Um, okay, uh, <laughs> I guess it's hard not to say everything. Uh, you know, from, from first of all the goal, why we're working, why we are every day waking up, I think that's the main uh, things that I think that I like about precious plastic having a really precise and meaningful goal Then of course the team and uh, Dave Johnny boy as I call him, you know, why, why? I don't know. That's not <laughs> that's not relevant for the interview <laughs> Stop. as well as the community and also the whole excitement that I can feel you know in, in the people working in the in you know in, on this project and and has a good energy, huh? everyone that is involved sort of very motivated yeah, exactly. and just wants to get it done. Exactly, and it's kind of a, yeah, exactly, also the energy and, you know, the reasons why people come across us and the whole, yeah, the whole reason behind people um, floating around precious plastic, I think that's, uh, it gives also a lot of great energies to carry on doing what we do on a daily basis. And now the whole team for version 3 left, so it's just Mattia and me who steady work on the project. Again. And mainly maintaining it while well, being here on the spot in Kenya, but also a lot is a digital side, making sure the forums run, that everyone finds their information, making videos, stuff like that. Answering your emails. Yeah, less emails, guys, less emails. So, so when you first started uh, working or helping out with fresh plastic, um, it was smaller, right? The project, the community was not that big yet. We didn't really have, uh, well, it was less evolved than it is now. So um, what made you come or help with the project or how did you end up yeah, so that's doing a, this? There's a little story behind. I was uh, on a quick uh, holiday in Morocco with some friends and all throughout I was really enjoying my time there but I was also really struggling with accepting all of this plastic around me, all of these animals eating plastic and just people, you know, carry on business as usual even though they were absolutely destroying the environment around them. So on that precise moment, I, I told myself I could not accept that anymore. And from the time that I came back to Europe, I sent an email to this one guy that I remember somewhere below sea level in the Netherlands working on some plastic recycling machines. And I sent this email and, uh, you know, then we started working together. We had a Skype meeting and we discussed a few things, how I could help. Then I went to, to Helmond, meet Dave, and at the time Taco was there as well. And since then, we looking about we talking about maybe May 2014 and since then we've been uh, constantly working together improving the, the, the project improving the community growing the team growing the expectation and Sylvester Yo. <laughs> so we're currently in Kenya setting up the workspace and the team is arriving now sorry yeah an hour <laughs> late morning morning Good morning, morning. Ciao. Um, so since then you've been working steadily on fresh plastic, right? Yeah, well, I mean, so in the beginning it was, uh, I was working on fresh plastic mainly on, uh, on my free time, meaning weekends and uh, during the night, uh, as I was working freelance on my web, uh, web design job mainly. And then more lately, I really dedicated my entire, my full life to precious plastic. It's been evolving and now it's basically my life really. 
So yeah, that's what gets me here in uh, Kisi and you know what wakes me up in the morning. So wh so where do you live? <laughs> well, it's a kind of a tough question, especially in border control. <laughs> I live in a van, so I've been living in a van for the past uh, two years. Kind of loving it, and uh, it's a nice van. Yeah, I can see Dave living in a van in, uh, in the next year or so. Maybe. What do you not like about fresh plastic? That's that's a tough one. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that I don't like about uh, precious plastic. Also because I almost nothing is imposed. So, you know, if there's anything that I don't sh particularly share or enjoy or like, we always discuss and we and we we go through it and we really see why I don't like it and how we can change it and maybe, you know, he explain why something is in that going in that direction and then uh, it kind of, you know, smoothens out and and I don't think I can I can name anything that I don't like in precious plastic so far. I think we also like to pivot as well, right? If something is not li nice, then it probably takes you a lot of energy to do it. So we try to just go in the other direction. So you just do the things you want to do. Yeah. Because you probably. And also, it particularly results. helps the fact that we are completely independent, very poor, <laughs> but fully independent, so that we don't have any companies or you know some uh, CEO giving us uh, directions and imposing us their own vision of how the project should work on their own uh, needs is really just what you know we see as the most efficient way to solve this plastic problem lightweight question what's your favorite food i love all food man and uh, now i'm just Dutch food i can't ask not that there's, <laughs> there's no food in, in holland no 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 anything you want to say to the community left or uh, yeah Keep on rocking. It's uh, it's great to be part of this community. You know, the goal might seem very far, but if we all work together, you know, one day, you know, the right solution might come up from one of you, maybe, maybe from us, maybe from someone here in Kisi. Who knows? It's just important that we all working towards this one goal. Yeah, you know, and yeah, thanks for supporting. So you know, you helping Dave, but you also helping me. You helping these guys here. And uh, yeah, I want to take this opportunity to really thanks every one of you that supporting on Patreon, but also, you know, just sharing the project, liking it, really feeling, uh, giving us the motivation to go on working every day. So for us, it's very important to have this big propulsion force behind us that really, you know, gives us the strength every day to wake up and work 15 hours a day <laughs> and really make this come together and, and, uh, and come to life, really. So thanks for all the support so far and keep on going. Yeah. See you next time. See you later. <laughs>